Hi, this is Dara, and I want to welcome you back to my video series on how I keep my homeschool organized in Notion. Um, this is the second video in the series. I suggest that you go and watch the first one where I actually do a walkthrough of what to expect in this. Um, from here, I'm actually going to be building out um, that the homeschool. So if you are already a, you know, a, a advanced Notion user, you probably don't need this video and you probably just went to walk through. But if you are brand new to Notion and trying to figure out how do you go about setting this stuff up, then you have come to the right place. So um, with Notion, you know what we're building, we're using this platform to build the application that we need to organize our, our information and our task in the way that we want to have it ordered um, in order to make it easy to use. So I'm going to just dive right in and start with the heart of the system, which is to build the tables, the, the databases that are going to underline this system. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and name this um, Homeschool Hub. Okay. And I'm going to create the first area, which is the planning page. And this is kind of just admin areas. The students will never come here. This is really the area for you, the, the lead of the homeschool. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to put in here is the courses table. So I'm going to do a backslash table, and then I'm going to type out courses just to name it. Um, the way that I'm doing this, I'm actually going to be sharing all the ta different tables. I'm going to share them amongst the students and just, you know, assign the record to the student that I'm talking about. And then I will do like lots of filtering later on to show whose work is whose. Um, you could also use the same approach and create uh, a separate thing for each student. The first time I did build this application, you know, last year was, you know, the first time I used Notion, I did create a separate planning area for um, each of my two students. Um, but I found that when I wanted to, like, you know, my daughter finished a class and now I want my son to take the same class and I'm having to set up that information again from scratch. And so I decided this time I'm going to do it differently and I'm just going to have everything um, together and filter as needed. All right, so when you create a table, you can just edit and create the properties like right here in the table view. Um, I like to actually open up a record and create it within the record. And notice Notion has given me three uh, records. It always um, does that on default. It gives you three to start off with. Um, so I'm going to call this one. I'm just going to do some copying and pasting real quick. So this one is Utopian and Dystopian Fiction, which is a fantastic course by The Great Courses Plus. Um, the teacher who's teaching this class is amazing, and it stretches back from Plato and Thomas More all the way through like current day, like Handmaid's Tale and Hunger Great Games and that kind of thing. So definitely worth watching. Um, I'm going to keep now my property. So my title is, is an individual thing. Each one is going to have its own title. Um, but the records or the properties are all going to be shared within the table. And then I would just say, what is the particular property of this thing? I'm going to keep tags, but I'm going to turn them into subject. I'm keeping it as you'll notice it says multi-select. I'm keeping it that way because some classes are interdisciplinary. Um, And I'm just going to type them all in and then take out what I don't need for this one just so they can be there. Because once I put them in in a, in a multi-select or a select list like this, they stay available as options to use later. And of course, as I go, I can add, I can add more um, if a class comes up that doesn't fit in the category. So like let's say um, all of a sudden your child decides they're going to take a dance class. Well, that's a different subject, so you will add that in. Uh, P P E. Okay, and then the colors are random, but you can change. You can choose your color by coming down here and choosing the color you want. You can delete an object if you don't no longer want it. Um, but I'm just going to remove these from this one because this is a language arts class. 
Uh, for me, in my high school, humanities and language arts were actually the same course. It was the same class, but they would do like the humanities portion within the lecture class, and then they would do the language arts as a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I kind of see them that way as separate, even though they may be related or you may have classes that are both language arts and humanities. But language arts to me is really looking at things that are um, creative, so fiction, poetry, that kind of thing from the reading standpoint, and then looking at things from the writing standpoint. So whether you're writing fiction, writing poetry, writing something that's nonfiction, like competitive analysis or argumentative or essays or what have you, that's what I consider language arts. Humanities I consider to be history, culture, poli-sci, civics, um, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the, how I break down those two different, maybe religion might be in humanities. That's how I break down the difference, distinction between language arts and humanities. But of course, it's a fine line between these two subjects. Um, I'm going to say how much credit the course is worth. Um, and I determine credit by two things. So one, is the course something they're going to take for the full year? It's so for a full year high school level course, it's going to be one credit. Is this a college course, but they're still going to take it within the confines of a semester? I'm going to count that as one credit. So one cre half a year of, of college is similar to a full year of high school. So that's kind of how I, I um, count this out. Now this particular course, if you were to take it in its entirety, I mean, doing all the assignments, reading all the material that she provides, I'd actually say this is much larger than a single credit. This could be two, considered two to three credits. Um, so if you took this as a college class, the full material, it probably would be you know three, three credits or more. Um, but we're going to scope it down to really being what I consider to be a one credit college course. All right, I'm going to want to put the information about where they can go take this class. It is an online course. So I just picked URL and the property type is URL. And then I want to give the login information. I'm keeping this as a text field. And I'll just put username. Okay, now it could be that um, they're taking a class where they do have multiple logins, and in that case, you can just take care of that at the enrolled course level. But you know, this is going to be our user, our, our way to get into the Great Courses Plus. And then um, the last thing I'm going to add here is their workbook as a property, and I'm going to do this as a file type. Now, if you're using the free version, of uh, Notion, you probably won't be able to put their workbooks up here in this space. And in fact, this is a free version. This is not my paid version. So I can't put the whole workbook. I'm just putting a sample of the first page just so you can see what that experience looks like. Um, if you can afford to get the paid version, I would actually advocate that. There's a lot of of different things that you can do once you have the paid version, including unlimited bandwidth. So on the workbook now to view, I can just click on it, it opens in a new window, and then you know I could read through it online. Or I can use this widget and I can download um, it to my computer. So if you if you just store the workbook here, but you want to print it out later, like maybe your student um, prefers handouts instead of uh, digital uh, material, then this is where you can store the book, but then, you know, print it out later. All right, so now let's go ahead. So this is the properties. Let me go ahead and close so you can see. So this is this is now the property. So all classes, all courses will have these same properties. All right, let's go ahead and give the rest of the information to this to this class. I'm going to open this in the new window just so I can see it. And by the way, I have not made this full width. You will see that's something I do a lot. I'm really picky about um, not having just blank space in my page. I'm also clo collapsing the sidebar just so I get the full width of the window. All right, I'm going to create um, an assignment button. So I could create a page and duplicate it, um, 
but I'm gonna actually make a button so that we can just see what is the, you know, use all the available resources and tools that are available in Notion. So, but first I need a page. So I'm gonna do right click, I mean backslash and create a page. I'm just gonna say laying. Well, I don't need that because it's only this button's only gonna be in this place. But you could maybe decide that all your assignments are laid out the same way, and you have a button that lives outside the course that you then you know drag into the course. All right, I could go in, I could fill out this page, give all the information it needs first, and then create the button, or I can create the button and then edit the page the button to um, have the information that I want on the page. I'm going to show you that way just in case you start, um, you create your page and then you're like, oh, I need to edit it. This way you'll know how to do that. So I'm going to say add assignment. I'm going to drag my page into the template area. I'm going to delete this to do. They just put that as an example. And when I close, that's my button. So if I were to click on this button now, it's going to open a new um, page, but that page is empty. So let's add some information. So I'm going to click this configure button. I'm going to go back into my page and now I can go ahead and give my page the information it needs. I'm going to make these all heading levels. So like I said, this is pretty hefty, this course. So I'm going to give the option to choose the um, what they want to read. Okay, and that is the information that I need here for my button. So now when I click this, it opens up a new assignment and I can um, just go in and start filling that out. I'm just gonna add the title here and go back so you can see how, oops, see how now I have that assignment button and I have my assignment. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've added um, three assignments here, but there are a couple things that I wanted to uh, give examples of what to do. So um, let's open the first one. So in this one, I actually have a PDF of the reading material for the students to read um, with this particular uh, episode. So I can do this in two ways. So one, I can go ahead and just embed this PDF into the page. So similar to the way that I did the um, in the file properties, it's the same thing. So if they, they click on it and they open it, then they will get uh, the text as such. The other way that I could do this is I can embed the PDF into the space so that instead of them opening it, um, in a new window, it's just here in the space. And I do that by hitting backslash um, PDF, and you see embed a PDF, and then choosing the file that I want. And then once the file's in there, and you see it's still, it's in the columns, because I made two columns, so I can drag that down so that it's in its own full column. And then I can grab the handlebars to make it an appropriate view space. And you know it doesn't need to be the full window, but at least enough that they can they can get and read. And so here you see now I can I can um, scroll the PDF to read the full document. So that's a good way of getting your reading material in here if you have digital reading material. 
I want to embed the lecture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go and grab the URL from the uh, lecture that I want and I'm going to paste it in. And I have these options to dismiss, create bookmark, or create embed. So I'm going to create embed. And what this is doing is it's embedding that web page. So there are some web pages out there that, that I found don't work, but if in general, you can embed a full web page into your Notion space. It just creates a frame with a window so it's looking through to that site. And again, I'm scrolling, pulling on the handlebars just to get enough space for them to see the video. So once they sign in, um, then they'll be able to watch this video. All right, so that's uh, two examples I wanted to show off. Another thing I wanna show is that for this particular assignment, um, the reading material is actually all from older works. So they are free, they fall under that gluten Gutenberg project where they are, you know, ancient texts are free. So Plato, Thomas More. Um, so if you can find a copy of it on the web, you can actually just embed it as a page. I wanted to show that how that would work. So here I've got this um, Hesed's work and days. Um, and this is just as you see, just a, a plain text page, right? Sometimes depending on how the page is uh, put together, this technique won't work, but for the majority of what I've found, it will work. So I'm just going to, I've got this Notion plugin. It works only in Chrome. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then here you'll see, I can choose the space that I'm adding it to. So that make sure it's the right workspace. And instead of saying add to the homeschool hub, I actually want to put where I want it to be. So this is going to be um, the page number is two dash and then Thomas More and Utopian Origins. And I hit save page. And when I go back, I'll find that that is going to be, oops, that's going to be here at the bottom of my page. So I can just move it up to where I want it to be by dragging it by the handlebars. And now if they go in, there is that work. Okay. And by the way, like, you know, I've mentioned before that I like full width for my pages. This is a great instance where, where full width is not appropriate because if you see reading this going full width around, across the screen, that's actually really difficult for the eye to track. That's the usability issue. And so this is actually not preferred. This is preferred. And then, you know, I've got I've got it in my dark mode, which is, is easier for some eyes to read. But of course, if your child has you know, it's, if it's better for them to read in um, the light mode, they can, they can do that as well, right? All right. All right, and so then the last thing that I wanted to show is that for um, this particular class, um, I have found some options to watch the movies instead of reading it. So like I, I had said, uh, this particular uh, Great Courses course is really hefty in reading, and so you're going to want to scope down the material. Um, but because it's utopian, dystopian fiction, many of much of that genre has been turned into a movie. So, you know, sometimes have them read, sometimes have them watch the movie, or it could just be a complete movie course if you wanted to. So I found it, um, Candide actually on YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the YouTube link. And this time, instead of embedding it, I'm just going to create a bookmark, right? So this way, when they want to use it, they click on that, and it just opens in a new window, much like the PDF did, okay? All right, so uh, through the magic of video, I have added some more courses just so we have things to work with. Um, this utopian terror in the 20th century is actually a great mashup with utopian dystopian fiction. So this is, you know dystopian fiction this is dystopian in real life so it goes through like you know uh from world war one through like hitler rwanda cambodia all these different uh, you know uh political systems that were just you know horrible um and again i consider that to be a full credit although the reading is much like you don't necessarily have to do reading you could just do the lectures but still the material is meaty enough that it really does take it really is college level. 
Um, I've got Applied Chemistry through Cooking, Herbal 101, Home Finance, Trigonometry, and Dark Room. So, you know, so I would just go through and, and put all the courses that um, we're going to work on. And in fact, this is just a running list. So as we have new work, that new course would be added because, again, maybe the second child, third child, fourth child, you know, takes that class. Or maybe there's a friend who's like, hey, I want that class for my kid and I've already broken it down perfectly. And if they're using Notion... I can just hand this off to them. And so just to show you that experience real quick, let's go back to our utopian fiction. Um, so if I hit share and I gave this as a uh, public access, that means that um, people can, can come and read this page, but they can also duplicate this into their own workspace. So if you have a course and you want to share this course with you know, other people, maybe in your homeschool community, maybe you're in a co-op, maybe it's just another friend who's like, yeah, that sounds great. Maybe your Facebook group. This is actually how you allow them to, to say that. You'll give them this, you'll just copy the link, send that link to them. They open it in their Notion space and it will give them the option to duplicate that into their space. So um, really handy. All right. So that's going to be it for the courses video. In the next video, I'm going to do the enrolled courses video to so show you how I take these and actually then apply it to um, that particular student.